Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Sumit from Backbench Coder. So this is the second part of this YouTube clone project. And if you have not watched the introduction part, please watch that to get an idea about the final product. I'll put the link in the description box. Okay. So in this video, we will do all the basic setup of our project like the package installation, folder structure and all. And then we will make this turning responsive layout using SAS and Bootstrap Grid system. And if you don't know SAS, that's not a problem. SAS in one line is CSS with some extra features. We'll see what is the SAS and what are the features that it provides. Okay, so let's see the layout again what we are going to build. Okay, so I have a header, then this is a sidebar, and then inside this home screen, I have this categories bar, and then these are the contents. And let's see the responsiveness. Look at this, this is for mobile screen, and here is an additional hamburger menu. And if you click on this hamburger menu, you can see the sidebar. Okay, and just go for the tab. Look at this, my sidebar is also synced and my contents are also responsive. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so just go to your terminal and create a React app using NPS Create React app. And I have already created the app because it takes a little bit more time in my machine. So here is my app using Create React app. Okay, so first of all, I'll delete the source folder and rebuild this because React comes with some unnecessary files. I mean, all the testing files which we don't really need. So delete this. And let's create the folder again. So SRC. Inside this, I need to create a root app. So app.js, which will hold our root component. Okay, let's create the basic React component. So RAFC. By the way, guys, I'm using this nice little extension, which is called React Redux Snippet or something like that. Okay, so I got my boilerplate. And let's name this not YouTube. Because it's not really YouTube. It's not YouTube. Okay, now let's render this app component in my index.js. So let's create another file which is index.js and inside this first of all import react dom from react dom also import react from react so imr nice and now react dom dot render I want to render my app component so app should be auto imported yes and if auto import does not work in your case just manually import this look at this auto import did the job and then render this in the root element so document dot get element by id the id is root cool okay so this is my basic reactor ready and now let's start the server so npm start make sure you are in the right directory oh finally we have this not youtube okay so our basic react app is working fine and now let's install all the packages we need for this layout so just go to your terminal and split the terminal okay so we are going to use the bootstrap grid system so for that react bootstrap let me just zoom in and then we need the main bootstrap file which will give me the bootstrap.css and then we are going to use the sas so node sas node sas will compile my sas into css and we need this particular version which is 4.14.1 it has to be this version cause in the latest version of this node sas there are some bugs Okay, and then for the icons, we are going to use React Icons package. And that's it. So install this. Okay, so meanwhile, let's see how we are going to make this layout. So inside this app. Okay, so first of all, we need this header, which has a full width. And then we have this sidebar and we have this content area. Okay, and if I click on this subscription, my content area does change. And click on liked videos my content area does change so my sidebar and the header is fixed okay so i can make this header a separate div and then for this sidebar and the content area i can put this in a single div and then i can just make this display flex and then the sidebar is a separate div and this content area i can put this in a container with that i can render a bootstrap row and inside that bootstrap row i can make this a separate column okay so that's the basic idea and of course we have this scrollable categories bar but that's not a big deal and the responsiveness we can just handle this using media query okay so let's create the basic layout okay so let it install and meanwhile we can create those components we need so we need basically the header component we need the sidebar component we need this categories bar component and we need this video component okay so let's create those components so inside the source folder let's create a folder which is components components 
and inside these components every component will have a separate folder for the style file and the js file so let's create a folder for header so header okay inside this header let's create the js file which will hold our component header.js okay and the style file of this header which is underscore header dot sas so scss and this underscore is a naming convention for sas file and i would recommend you to always follow the naming convention now at this time if you try to compile the sas file it will render an error and that is because our node sas node sas package is not installed yet okay so let's create the basic boilerplate of this header so rafc header okay cool and then let's create other components which is of course the sidebar so again inside a folder sidebar so sidebar.js which will hold our component so rafc and sidebar cool and also create the sidebar.sas file inside this folder underscore sidebar.scss and also remember to import the sas file inside this sidebar dot slash sidebar.sas and inside this header oops import dot slash header dot sas okay and then the other components are categories bar so categories bar and always maintain the folder structure so inside this categories bar i will have the js file categories bar dot js and the style file is underscore categories bar dot sas let's create the boilerplate ra fce and categories bar so bar and what i need we need this video component so also create the video component video inside this video video dot js video dot js create the boilerplate video okay also create the sas file so underscore video dot sas just import the sas file in video dot js import dot slash underscore video dot sas inside this categories bar import dot slash categories bar dot sas okay okay so that's all our components needed for the home screen okay so my packages are finally installed now i can focus on the layout okay so just go to app.js and first of all we need the header so just import the header should be auto imported nope nice we need to manually import this so import header from header i mean component slash header so import header from component slash header slash header okay cool so let me close that then i need a div with a class app container i'll be using bm naming convention inside this app container i'll put the sidebar so just import the sidebar why my auto input is not working i need to manually import this import sidebar from dot slash component slash sidebar slash sidebar okay and then we need a container for the home screen so that i can make that responsive so container should be auto imported from react bootstrap this time please yeah and i'll give it a class name app main and i'll also put a property which is fluid so that it removes the padding cause container comes with a default padding i don't want the padding and then i'll put the home screen inside this container so home screen the home screen is not yet created so we'll create this in a minute okay so home screen not no typo okay so i'll create another folder which is screens and it will hold all the screens uh, subscription screen like video screen watch screen and all so let me create a folder which is screen and inside the screen i'll have a folder home screen the same folder structure home screen and inside this home screen i'll have the js file and the style file so inside this home screen dot js which will hold our component and i don't think i need the sas file if i need i'll create that later okay so inside this home screen let me create a boilerplate rafc home screen and inside this home screen i need the categories bar right so just remove the div as we are going to put some row so container should be auto imported from react bootstrap yes and then just put the categories bar please auto import okay i need to import that manually again and then inside a row 
row should be auto imported yes from the output step inside this row i need that video component right so let me create a dummy array of 16 elements and then we will map over that so just put a dummy array so spread operator with new array with the array constructor just put the number of length you want it will give me the array of 20 elements and then i can just map over this and let's not worry about the key of the react and then just render column column should be auto imported from react bootstrap and inside a column i need the video component video we need to import this and inside this column let's pass some properties i want it to take three grids for the large screen and then for the medium screen it will take four grid okay basically four column nice and let me just import the video component and the categories bar so import video from oops video from dot dot slash dot dot slash component slash video slash video okay let's copy this and this time i need to go to categories bar let's copy this paste this here lot of work okay so i think my home screen is fine and let's now render this home screen in the app so now just auto import this please yes so home screen is auto imported nice and let me just render this app so let's go to terminal my server is running yes just go to the browser wow my bootstrap is not working and this is because we have not imported a bootstrap css file okay so just go to index.js index.js and here just import the bootstrap.css file remember we have installed the bootstrap package so import bootstrap bootstrap slash d slash i don't know css slash what bootstrap dot min dot css something like that so bootstrap dot min dot css yes okay nice so i have my dream layout and now let's style this now i like to give border to every component during the css cause it helps me to manage the layout and what i mean by that is just go to app.js and inside this div dot class name just add a border bootstrap border so border no border like info from bootstrap class and for the container let's add a border border we'll later remove that of course and then this is border warning and just go to header just add a border there header.js here class name something like border dark okay just go to sidebar.js it will help me to debug the you know layout issues because css is the hardest language of web development okay so border then border what like info border warning border danger okay and now just go to the app i think we should see a grid okay so we have a grid and you can't see that properly because the background is white anyway let's go step by step okay so first of all we'll be creating a base.sas file which will hold all our sas variables all our sas mixins okay so let's create a base.sas file inside this source folder so inside the source folder base.sas file always follow the naming convention underscore base.sas okay so here i want to add some variables basically the color palette okay so dollar this way we can you know, define a variable text color and then colon the color is b1 bd b4 so it has b1 bd b4 and then semicolon okay so this way i can define a sas variable and whenever i need that i can just use the dollar text color okay so let me add some other colors which we are going to use in this project okay so for the background color we are going to use two types of black color so black primary and black secondary the name of the color variable and then for the border color is slight gray and then for the breakpoints we can also define the variables so this is for breakpoint medium 1 to 24 pixel and breakpoints and breakpoint small 5 to 0 pixel and then we will define some basic styles inside this base.sas file so star so target the root element and just remove the margin remove the padding and just use box sizing border box like look at this this is just normal css and i just don't want to waste time in this css and all okay fine and then we will target the body so inside this body we will add some styles like background black primary so this background black primary variable is defined here so you can just use the variable as dollar the name of the variable as simple as that 
and then background attachment fixed and the color is the text color again the variable is defined here okay and then we want to add the font family so font family roboto we need to import that so first let me import that from google font so at the top just write the import statement i'll put the link of this roboto font or you can just you know import this from google font okay and now just inside this body just mention the font family so font family roboto sans serif and then i also want to change the letter spacing so letter spacing is 0.1 pixel okay cool so this is my body this is my variables i have imported the google font okay nice and now let's go to app.js inside this app.js i have this app container and i have this app app main okay so let's design this so let's get another app.sas file so inside this source underscore app.sas file just target the app container so on app underscore underscore container okay so inside this app underscore underscore container just use display flex so that it gets row by row and then the height is 90 viewport height because we'll change the height of the header to 10 viewport height so it will match to 100 so that's it and now just go to app.js and import this app.sas file import dot slash underscore app.sas file okay so save this and now just go to browser we should see some improved ui Oh, so again I forgot to import the base.sas file so many files so just go to index.js so import dot slash base.sas file Oops. now refresh this okay so here it is so I have the header but the display flex did not work this is because this is because I have not used this underscore underscore okay so app underscore underscore container now yeah nice so I have this header and the sidebar and the main content is display flexed now let's design the header so just go to header.js that's all the setup we needed so header.js yep let's close all the unnecessary files we need only the header.js and the header.sas okay so inside this header.js first of all I'll put a header class at the div okay then I'll remove the header and here I need to import some icons from the react icons package we have just installed so I have imported fa words from react icons slash fa fa means font awesome and then ai outline search from react icons slash ai and then md notification and md apps from react icons slash md md means material designed okay cool and then inside this header I will put the fa bar cause I need to show the hamburger menu and I will hide that first we need to show this using media query and inside this fa bar I will put a class name something like you no know, header menu header underscore underscore menu oops menu and then I can also pass a property which is size so size 26 that is cool and then after this icon I will put an image which will hold our youtube logo so image dot the class name is what like header logo header underscore underscore logo so inside this source I have this youtube logo so here it is nice and then what then I need to show a form so that the user can search and inside this form I have an input and I have a button and by the way guys I am using this emit syntax so if you don't know what emit emit is just a tool to you know write more efficient html and in fact I have a video on emit so you can just watch that now just press tab now inside this form action I don't need this action so type text and a placeholder something like search search okay cool just make this multi line nice and inside this button i will have a you know, type submit so that if the user press enter i can execute the form submit and the text of the button i need to put an icon here so the icon is ai outline search we have just imported that so ai outline search and again i can put a size property so size 22 that's it and that's all for the form and then I need the user user avatar and some dummy icons right so I'll create a div with a class name header icons headers underscore underscore icons inside this header icons I'll put an icon so md notification the size is 28 and the other icon is the md apps so again I have imported that also mention the size 28 these are the SVG icons by the way we can change the color and then I have the users avatar so image I need to add an image so just go to a browser 
and find the image. Wow, look at this. Copy the link, go to image, paste it there at the source. Now it should work and the alt is avatar. Nice. And I think I have all the things arranged for the header and just render this YouTube using YouTube. Nice. We have this huge header. So let's design this. So just go to header. I mean underscore header dot says. Okay, so inside this header dot says file, first I will import the base dot says file. This is because I need to use some of the variables from that base dot says file. So you can import that using at the rate import and then just target the header class. So I have put an header class inside this header component, this one, and now just target the main header. Okay, so first of all, display flex and by default the flex direction is row. And then justify content space between to put some space in between the elements and then align item center to make those elements vertically center. Let me just put it side by side. Okay, and then just add some padding. So one rem at top and bottom and three rem at left and right. And then just add a background color of black primary. And remember we have defined this black primary in that base.sas file. In fact, if you just hover over this, you can see the black primary color which is has 16181B. And then just add a height and width. So height is 10 viewport height and the width is 100% so that it takes the full width of the screen. And just save this. Okay, so look at this, the height of the header is 10 viewport height. And now I just need to manage the manage the images. Okay, fine. And now as we are using SAS, we can now just nest the class name. And what I mean by nest is, I look at this, I now need to target this header underscore underscore menu, right? So I can just target this using ambersen core underscore underscore menu inside this curly brace. So it will just concatenate with the parent class. So now the class name is header underscore underscore menu. And you can just hover over this and see the class name for the double checking. Okay, so it's SAS, we can now nest the class and that's the beauty of BAME naming convention and SAS. And I want to hide this menu at first, we want to show this menu with the media query for the smaller screen, so display none. And now target the logo, so ambersen again underscore underscore logo and again it will concatenate with the parent class. So the parent class of this logo is header, so it will be header underscore underscore logo and that's the class name of this image, header underscore underscore logo. And now just add some properties like width 30 pixel, height 30 pixel, object fit content to maintain the aspect ratio and display block. Just save this. Look at this, my image is smaller now and now I need to target this form. So inside this header, I can target an element by just name that element. So form, we don't need to put any dot, we don't need to put any ambersen and in fact you can just hover over this. So element class header and then inside this, this is the form. Okay, so I want this form to take 60% width and I can do that using flex container. So as this header is a flex container, I can use flex 0.6. So flex 0.6 will just take the 60% and then I will add display flex and align self center. So display flex will place the input and the button row by row and I don't think I need this align self center, fine. Okay, then I will add a little padding and margin. So padding 0.1 rem and margin 0.1 rem at all side. And then I'll add a border radius 3 pixels for a little rounded border and then border 1.2 pixels solid. That's some basic CSS and then background color black secondary. And remember we have also defined this black secondary in the base.sas file. So just save this. Look at this. You can see the background color because we need to make the background color of the input transparent. Okay, so let's target the input inside this form. So we'll go inside this form. So inside this form, we'll target the input. So inside the curly brace, and then just hover over this, look at this, this is inside the header. Then inside this header, we have the form. Inside that form, we have the input. Okay, so inside this input, I'll add a width of 100% and the border none. So I, I don't want any border here. Just some basic CSS, and then the font weight 500, background transparent. Again, some basic CSS. And then I want padding 0.3 rem at all side, and the color is text color. And again, the text color is defined in that base.sas file. So I'm just using the variable. Okay, fine. And then the input on focus. So input on focus mode, I don't want any outline. So again, I can use the focus mode using ambersen and then colon focus. And again, guys, if you have some problem inside this sas, you can just hover over this and look at this. This is on input focus. Okay, just save this. Nice. 
and now I need to resize this image so let's target that header icons I guess yes this is the header icons so now just close this form let's close this logo close this menu and now let's target the icons so again ambersen underscore underscore icons the parent class is header so it will be header underscore underscore icons let's hover over this look at this this is header underscore underscore icons okay so I want this div to take 15 percent of the header so that's why flex 0 0.15 and then display flex justify content space around align item center so this will put some space in between the elements and align item center will make this you know vertically centered as this is in you know, a flex direction row and then inside this icon just target the image so inside this icon just target the image just hover over this look at this this is inside header icons and then image and then some basic CSS like border radius 50% to make this rounded with 40 pixel object fit content to maintain the aspect ratio and then margin left 5 pixel that's it just save this look at this I have this header nice header and now I just need to design this button ok so inside this form I can just target the button let's close the input inside this form I have the button so just target the button this as this is an element we don't need to put any ambersen at all ok so first of all I need to put a padding at top and bottom 0 and 1.25 rem at left and right and the color is text color and the background is transparent so background transparent save this we have a better button and now just remove the border so border none yeah, this is nice and now on focus I need to remove the border so just target on focus so button ambersen colon focus as simple as that border none that is cool save this and just go to the bigger screen look at this I have this nice header I can see the hamburger menu and now just go for the responsiveness I need to give a space in between them but that's fine for now and now for the smaller screen I need to change the width of this of this form and I need to show this hamburger button right ok so let's use the media query I am done with this large screen so close the header now target using media query ok so at the red media to maximum width a maximum width breakpoint small and if you just hover over this look at the breakpoint small is 520 pixel and this is also defined in base.sas file ok so up to 520 pixel we need to override the design and now inside this just target the elements ok so dot header the class name header I want to add a padding at all side one rem and then the form flex one so before this was 0 0.6 this was 0 0.6 so it would take 60 percent and now it will take the full 100 percent ok so just go to 520 pixel mm, this is I guess 520 I don't know let's see if it works it is 520 if it does not it is not 520 ok now for the small screen I want to show the hamburger menu and I also want to hide the YouTube logo so YouTube logo display none I mean header underscore underscore logo display none just save this yeah this is working fine so I have this hamburger menu and now I want to hide these buttons so this is inside the header icons so an ambersen underscore underscore icons icons if I just use display none it will make everything display none but I don't want that I want to show the avatar right so for that we can use the not so just target everything just let me zoom zoom in because it's some advanced CSS ok so just target everything and then use colon and then inside this not function just use the image tag so it will not target the image look at this so display none will affect every element but not the image that's fine ok so that's all for the header and now let's design the sidebar so just close the header close the sas just target the sidebar so sidebar.js and sidebar.sas ok cool ok so first of all I need to import some icons cause this sidebar is all about icons just remove the sidebar and add a class name sidebar in fact you know what just remove the div and convert this to a nav that's more suitable more suitable react semantic element ok so again I will import some icons from react icons ok so import these icons md subscription exit app and all from react icons md md means material design 
okay so inside this nav i'll put some list elements so inside this list tag i'll put this icon so md home this is just imported and also add a size 23 and also add a span which is home the so save this we should see a nice little home icon mm. look at this i have this home icon nice and then i'll add some other items just some repetitive work so then we have this item md subscription we have this item md thumbs up for likes and i just need to change the text which is you know, liked videos cool and then we have this md history which is span history and then we need to add couple of more and guys if it seems boring i mean the styling of the layout you will find the code at the description box so you can just so you can just check that out okay so with that let's add some other list items so md so md library books with a size 23 and then we have this dissatisfied icon which is i don't know and then we have this horizontal line and then we have this logout icon and then this horizontal line just save this we should see some more icons yeah now go to sidebar.sys this will be fun now let's target the sidebar first of all we have this sidebar class name right okay so dot sidebar cool okay so first of all i'll add the background color black secondary and we also need to import the base.sys file that is important we have not imported that yet and then we will add display flex and the flex direction column this time we need to explicitly define the flex direction column because the default flex direction is row and then the width height and the padding top that's normal css just save this we should see some error nice now let's import the base.sys file so at the rate import dot dot slash dot dot slash base dot says use the semicolon what happened base dot says what underscore base dot says man semicolon save this still we have the error nope just refresh this yeah cool and now inside this sidebar i can just target the list element so no ambition needed as this is an element so inside this sidebar just hover over this look at this this is inside the sidebar add some property which is display flex and flex direction row by default and align item center so this will make vertically centered and then padding of 0.6m 0.6m at top and bottom 1.5m at left and right margin 0.2 at top and bottom 0 at left and right and the cursor is pointer so that so that user can understand that oh i can click that element the save this we have this nice little arrangement nice nice so far so good okay let's target the span so inside this list element i can target the span inside this span just add some basic style like margin left one rem font size 14 pixel font weight 500 to give it a bold look bold letter spacing 0.4 pixel just save this we have already saved that look at this we have this nice little sidebar now let's add some hover effect on this list so inside this list i can target the hover effect using ampersand colon hover just hover over this look at this list hover so what i want i want to change the background color so background color this is border color so dollar border color nice just hover over this look at this cool and now let's target the horizontal line so azure so background color stress time by the way let's use the border color save this no effect like seriously there is no effect and this is because this is inside the list element look at this just hover over this this is inside the list element but it has to be inside the sidebar cut this close the list save this nice let's go for the bigger screen this is nice this is seriously nice clean design and now for the medium screen i need to hide this pan and then for the mobile screen i need to hide the whole sidebar so let's do that so let's use some media query let's close the sidebar i'm done with the last screen and then at the rate media for max width what breakpoint medium inside the curly brace we need to override some css so just target the sidebar and make this width 90 pixel 
and then target the list element and make this justify content center as this is the only element left inside this sidebar if I make this span, span hidden and this will make this horizontally centered and then just use span display none just save this look at this I have the smaller sidebar it looks cool and then for the breakpoint small and just target the sidebar and make this display none and now here I need to do some react job I mean job related to react react state okay so let's do that basically what I want is when this is for smaller screen I mean hey what the yeah look at this when this is for smaller screen I want to show the hamburger menu and if I click on this hamburger menu I want to show the sidebar right so I need to keep a state at the app component and that state will be a boolean value and I can change that state using this toggle using this hamburger menu so if I click on this hamburger menu that state will be toggled and based on that state value I need to show this sidebar ok so that's the idea so just go to app.js so basically let's create a state the name of the state is sidebar and toggle sidebar the name of the setter function toggle sidebar and this will be a boolean value use state and by default I don't want to show the sidebar so this is false and just import the use state from react should be auto imported yes and now I want to create an handler function and I will pass this to the hamburger menu ok so just create a handler function like handle toggle sidebar or something like that handle toggle sidebar so what it will do it will toggle the sidebar so just use the toggle sidebar the setter function and it will just toggle this so just get the value and not value just toggle this as simple as that nice and now I need to pass this handles toggle sidebar to the hamburger menu so just pass this in header so inside this header handle toggle sidebar oops I missed the copy handle toggle sidebar and inside this just pass the handle toggle sidebar that is cool and inside this sidebar I want to show the sidebar value so sidebar sidebar okay, so now inside this header I can destructure the property so just go to header.js I mean at the function just destructure the, the name of the function the name of the function was toggle sidebar oops yeah handle toggle sidebar wow so just copy this and paste this handle toggle sidebar so I'll destructure the property now I'll trigger this on click on this FA words so FA words is my hamburger menu so just add a event listener on click on click and now using an arrow function just trigger the function so handle toggle sidebar that's it and now just go to sidebar.js here I am getting the sidebar value I can just destructure the sidebar okay cool now based on this sidebar value I can just add some class name at this nav okay so here I will be using some class name conditionally so if the sidebar is true I will add another class name which is open and that open will make this sidebar display block so now this is display none and I will add another class name which is open so just add another class name inside this sidebar so dot open inside this sidebar and just make this display block Oops, I missed the ambersen. So ambersen dot open. So this means this element has both the class sidebar and the open. And if that happens, just make this display block. And now I need to conditionally add this class name. So just remove this border and border danger. I am done with this border. Just remove this. And now inside this class name, just remove this to okay. Just use a curly brace as we need to use some JavaScript just check the sidebar the property coming through the sidebar component and if the sidebar is true I need to add sidebar and also the class open and if the sidebar is false I will just add the class name sidebar just save this nice and now at this point it should work let me just check just click on this hamburger menu look at this so I can toggle this using hamburger menu ok so what's happening actually inside this app.js I have this state sidebar and the setter is side, toggle sidebar and the sidebar is by default false and this is by default false means inside this sidebar it will check if the sidebar is true or false the sidebar is false so it will just add the class name sidebar and for the smaller screen the sidebar class has display none so it will so it will hide the sidebar now the important point is the hamburger menu will only reveal 
if you are in a smaller screen okay so if this is in the large screen look at this if this is in the large screen i have this sidebar false and if the sidebar is false i have this only sidebar class this sidebar class and this sidebar class i mean inside the sidebar dot says i have the sidebar class blocked i mean nothing is there so this is by default blocked and this is only display none only for the smaller screen this is important okay nothing complicated and now for the smaller screen you can just toggle this using the setter function which is passed inside this header dot js using this handle toggle sidebar and if you toggle this it will be sidebar true and if this is sidebar true this is already hidden for the smaller screen and it will just add another class which is open and that open will make this visible so this open will make this display block cool and now i want to add some transition here so first of all i will not make this display none instead i will make this transform translate x minus 100 percent so again this will hide the sidebar and just copy this and for the open probably you have guessed this i will make this translate x zero so it will reveal the sidebar and then i'll add some transition at the sidebar so at that sidebar just add some transition the transform property oops the transform property i'll add a duration of 0 0.2 seconds and is in so just save this let's see let's go for the smaller screen smaller screen yeah cool just save this look at this it's cool right now if the sidebar is hidden i want this content area to take the full width so for that i can use the position fix so just go for the smaller screen inside this sidebar make this position fix i mean z index 999 save this look at this so this is now out of the flow and now if you click on this look at this that is cool if you want you can add some backdrop that will be fine and now one thing i just want to add which is if i click on any of this button or any of this list item i want to hide this sidebar so now at this point you can only hide this using this hamburger menu but i want to hide this if i click on this button okay so let's do that we can do that using the same function so just go to app.js we have this handle toggle sidebar right to hide the sidebar and to you know, show the sidebar just pass this handle toggle sidebar to the sidebar so handle toggle sidebar is handle toggle sidebar and just inside this sidebar just restructure this destructure the property handle toggle sidebar and now you can add a on click event listener for every list item and on click on that you can just hide the sidebar by passing a false value but instead of adding an event listener for every list item you can just add an event listener for the nav okay so for the nav just use on click just add the on click event listener and on click on that i'll execute an arrow function and that function will eventually execute this handle toggle sidebar and just pass the false not false see false cool and just save this look at this if i click on this button nice again just show this click on this button nice nice so it's working fine and now i can remove this border and let's design this content area this video is getting longer and i need to take a break so see you in the next section